Let's talk about fixing bad fretting hand habits on bass. Now I got this query. I'm slightly concerned about my wrist angle in relation to the neck, the position of my thumb on the neck, and I'm trying to cut out flying fingers, any good exercises or tips. Well, let's get into it. I think first, when you're talking about fretting hands, you've got to talk about how you hold the bass. Whether you sit down without a strap like I am doing right now, sit down with a strap or stand up, it really doesn't matter. Your wrist angle and the way you fret the bass is going to be affected down to that. So it's always a little awkward when I have to get these angles in whilst filming, but what I've got here is the bass contacting me at the top here, my chest. The cutaway here is contacting the leg and I'm holding just sort of this part of my wrist just over the top there. Now that means this, I do not have to grab hold of the neck. That base is going nowhere, even without having a strap. So you do what you need to do in terms of strap or standing up, whatever you like. But when sitting down, I'm making sure, and it's pretty much the same when I stand, the same strap height so I can have my base like this. I push the base slightly away and up a bit. So you can see this angle coming down from the base. Look at players like Hadrian Faro. He puts his base on his other leg and he has much more of an angle and it's almost like a classical guitarist. And he has access to the entire neck and that leads to wrist angle. Let's talk about that now. Let's just play something boring. Frets one, two, three, four of the G string. I'm also muting to try not to have other strings ringing out. If you look at the wrist here, it's relatively straight. And if you look at the fingers, they're quite curled. That allows you to actually get to the fret in the first place. I know you probably know loads of this stuff already, but let's just go through everything. I mean, if you fret too far away from the fret, you get a buzz. I think we most of us know that. So right by the fret. I mean, here's one thing. Don't fret too hard. Like try that right now, fretting hard does nothing apart from choke the sound also if you pluck too hard. So we nice light touch, unless you really want to go for some sort of rock thing where you're playing harder, but it's just easier on the joints and the fingers if you relax a lot more. And certainly when fretting, if I don't fret hard enough, yeah, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna get a ghost note unintentionally. There's a point I get to, it's too much buzz there. there that's not, I don't need to press any harder than that. So that's one thing to do, is just not to press down too hard. We can talk about the thumb behind the neck as we're doing this. And I'm not saying I'm the best you know, technician there is, because I'm absolutely not, and there are lots of different people that do slightly different things, but this is a pretty good starting point. My thumb is behind that second finger, roughly. But if I do something like a slide, that thumb stays there and it pivots about the back of the neck. I'm touching the back of the neck right in the middle. Now this is one finger per fret, which I'll talk about very quickly. So that's where we have the first finger on the first fret and then two lines up on fret two and then three and then four. I think people obsess over that a little bit too much because if you look at bass players playing on YouTube, really great bass players. They're not really doing that, you know. Stuff like that, if you need to do a slide, they're leading with the first finger. Players like Leland Sklar, he's got f finger damage from accidents over the decades that he's been playing. He, he adapts the way that he can do it and he, he has a technique which is a bit more slidey but you know using slides and hammer-ons he's got this lovely technique based on the way he can do it there's no real thing as perfect technique let's do that so I've got a bunch of exercises like this in a free book and I'll put the link below to that here's one of the exercises I'm just going one two three four you probably know this one and then go down to the D now here's where it gets a bit more difficult when you have to fret on the E string down here. Now, the wrist angle isn't exactly great there, but there is a little bit more of a wrist angle that has to happen as you come round. Now that thumb is at the back of the neck 
I don't know if you can see that, roughly there. And I'm just sort of, I am moving it a bit as I'm coming. Okay, you, there's a bit of that sort of needing to happen. But again, really trying not to press down too hard. Keeping those fingers pretty curled. It doesn't matter what you play, you can play a scale or anything. Here's G minor, G natural minor. So that for me, anyway, playing in this way, when I'm playing on these strings, the wrist is, is a lot straighter. It's coming this way a bit more to get down to here. But if you just don't press very hard and you have a light touch, and that's sometimes to do with the strings and the way the bass is set up, then you don't have to strain. I think you know what I mean when you get these pains here and round here. You don't want that at all. I've been playing for 32 years now, so I know that I've never ever touch wood had any issues in this way down to my technique because I think because of the very light touch. Now flying fingers is where you want your fingers to be close to the fretboard but they just fly up over there. So what are some tips to to combat that? Let's go to the fifth fret of the G string. We'll do this really slowly back to the boring one, two, three, four. Now don't feel that every single finger needs to be perfect and you've got to get the ruler out to get it right there. You can shift across a bit. And if you find it difficult, the higher you go, the narrower the frets get. So I'm now at the ninth fret. So I'm just playing and I'm keeping the fingers down. So at this point they're all down. I release the little finger and then the third, keeping everything else down. Now what I'm trying to do here is to lift up the fingers not very much off the fretboard. And if you think about it, that's going to give you much more economy of motion. My little finger just naturally tends to fly up more than the others. It always has done. It's never been a problem for me. I'm not too concerned about it. You can just keep going down. Now the thing here is every note is ringing out without those buzzes. The touch is very light here once more. I'm not, if, if you keep pressing too hard, you can't get fast because you're wasting too much energy. So lighten up the technique. If you were to play something as fast as that, I'm now on the B, the fourth fret. There's a timing thing with the plucking, of course. But the fingers have to, well, I have to use my little finger there. I can't do it without that. Many people don't use the little. So it's a case of maybe just altering that thumb at the back. The thumb is like that. It's, and I know some people do different, that's fine. Everyone's got different thumb sizes or whatever. So you must experiment. You can just, it, nothing is rigid. Nothing is set in stone here. But to play that fast, I do need one finger per fret, and I need one finger hovering above. If the little finger is here, well, it's not there. So try and get that thing going where they're just hovering above the note. There is another fingering system on bass called extended fingering, if I play a G major scale. So that's one finger per fret. The fingers are covering a four fret span with each finger having its own job. When I come down to here, the E, the D and the C, the first finger needs to stretch out to get to the third fret. I can do a little shift or just work on that stretch. I did this YouTube short where I just gave, it was within a longer video, and I just talked about the fact that I, I see a lot of students when I used to teach in schools, they, they, their hands were like this, right? And if you just relax and open it up, your stretch becomes bigger, and the short was about that, and I got so much flack for that. Yeah, like, so obvious, Captain Obvious, but 
I think it's true. Quite a lot of people do this. Look, if you just relax and open up the hand a bit, the stretch suddenly gets bigger. I've got quite small hands and yet I can, I can do that stretch. That's extended fingering there where we're sort of breaking slightly out of the, the fourth fret span. How many times do bass players play like that in actual music? Not really very much. I mean, certain styles you might, some jazz fusion runs, I can think of some, you know, progressive rock, yes, maybe. But for most of us, we're doing like... You know, here, I know I'm playing an F. I, 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 why do I have to be so disciplined with keeping my hand, all my fingers down there? I don't. So I'm relaxing everything. There, I might need all the fingers. So I think in reality, what people are doing, bass players are doing, is like a combination of these techniques. And the more you play, you're not even thinking about it. You know, sometimes if you need notes that are next to each other like that, it will make sense to do that. Other times, it might just do what you want, really. Sometimes I see people with a thumb over the top. It's, it's all fine, you know, you might be resting a bit to to just relax a bit. But I think relaxation is the key to all of this. Don't press too hard, don't pluck too hard, unless that's the effect you want. You know, we want to play safely here and not ever have any injuries. That comes from relaxation. So that's quite a lot of tips. I mean, in terms of exercises, you've got those free ones in that free book, the link below. <laughs> got these style of exercises that aren't very musical but they're good for the mechanics. See here I'm just altering things a bit, pivoting on that thumb. And that thumb is just touching the back and I'm sliding. It's got loads of exercises like that you can change the fingers around. It's really good for dexterity, that one. And you can do scales. Something like that, I would definitely need all the fingers involved. And like I said before, bass players aren't really playing like that. But it's fantastic for practice. Okay, so you can do all kinds of things. That was an arpeggio there. Raking. I honestly think the best tip I can give you is just not to get too bogged down in those systems, one finger per fret or extended. It's to learn them, but then to relax in your body and in your mind and just see what comes out. I hope you, that solves some of the issues and there aren't too many questions that come from that, but if there are, I'm, I might have missed something out. You might have something to add. Please do put it in the comments below. If you have any questions, do the same. Please do give the video a like. Thanks. I think I'm going to leave it there. But, you know, uh, the last three lessons, I think, have been subscriber questions. So do keep them coming. You can either comment below or get in contact. I've got my website details all in the description. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.